One of the biggest reasons, in my opinion, is why opinion, why businesses fail, is because the leaders really don't know what they don't know. They haven't taken time to thoroughly think out and write a solid business plan. A lot of people keep the, what their plan is in their head, but when you put things on paper, it has a way of helping you see things that you wouldn't have seen otherwise. So that's why I think it really is important to really understand what goes into a business plan and then use the business plan properly. And just like any strategy, failing to uh, really have a, a solid plan in place and then implement it in a proper way where you're being flexible, uh, you're going to fail. So set yourself up for success by really making time to lay down a solid foundation by really considering what needs to go into your small business plan. So let's get started. One of my favorite uh, stories uh, about um, decision making goes all the way back to Alice in Wonderland. Uh, Alice is uh, at a fork in the road and uh, she looks over at the Cheshire Cat and she says, which way should I go? And the Cheshire Cat essentially says, well, where are you headed? And she says, I don't know. And then the Cheshire Cat replies, well, then it just doesn't matter which way you go. So I think I'm paraphrasing from the movie. But uh, the lesson is you really have to have a clear idea of where you're headed in order to get there. And that's the quality of your life. If you've taken a class from me, you've probably heard me say it before. The quality of your life depends on the quality of the decisions that you make. And we're always making decisions. And so hopefully this uh, video is helpful to you in helping you create a solid business plan that actually helps open doors for you, helps you secure a financial loan, and helps you compete successfully in this very, very competitive environment that we're in. So, what is a business plan? Well, a business plan is a written document that describes your business. It's an outline. And it has the purposes and goals of your business, and it illustrates how the goals will be realized. So uh, you really have to have a detailed marketing strategy in order to be successful. I mean, these days with social media, uh, it's easy to, to look professional and to compete with other organizations. You just need to do your marketing well and make sure you have a solid product that has a clear market niche built into it. And so how your strategy works, uh, being able to take a look at a formal profit and loss projection, a realistic one. You know, how much cash do you actually need to have uh, flowing through your business in order to be able to pay all the overhead? You know, what is the overhead costs that are going to be involved? So profit, of course, comes from uh, making sure that you have enough revenues flowing through to meet all the um, the expenses that are in your business. So let's talk about that more. Why would you write a business plan? Well, without one, leaves too many things to chance. Your business plan really is your blueprint for identifying objectives and developing strategies to meet each of those objectives. So that's the one of my favorite books is uh, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. And he says, begin with the end in mind. And that beginning with the end in mind really is about laying out a map to your destination. You know, what's important to you? You can achieve whatever is important to you, but you just have to have the right map, just like that with Alice in Wonderland. Uh, you need to be able to see whether or not a company makes a pro has the ability of making a profit. I, I've seen people open up um, restaurants or clothing stores because they just assumed that everybody would like what they had to offer. But they didn't put it in the right place or they didn't offer it in the right way or they didn't have the right hours of operation or they didn't market it so people could find their products or maintain relationships with the, the business. So a lot of different reasons why businesses fail. Uh, you really have to have a clear understanding of the startup cost. So that's one of the things that I look for when I'm grading small business plans is, you know, do, have they really thought everything through? And so 
failing to think things through uh, on a written business plan uh, can cause businesses to not be so successful, right? So uh, obviously you need capital and um, being able to go to a, an investor or a lender to help fund the business you need to show them that they're not going to lose their money and you do that by having a written document that shows that you've really thought things out and you have a plan of action that you're going to work by. And so uh, most banks that lend to businesses have experts that can look at your a business plan with a critical eye and go, oh no, this is going to be too much of a risk or, oh yeah, absolutely, this makes great sense. I think you've thought of everything. Of course, we're going to give you a loan. We want to help you be successful. You know, when, when they loan money, they can make money. And when they loan money foolishly, they'll lose money. So no institution wants to lose money. So you need to be able to really be very very clear on what kind of revenues could be coming through i mean it doesn't make sense if you've got a product that only sells for a dollar and um, you, uh, you that's the only product that you're selling so there's going to be a limited market niche for that product and so if the even if the markup is good you may not be selling enough of those particular products in order to um, meet expenses. You want to do more than just meet expenses. Being able to really have a clear idea of if you have a restaurant, how many customers will be coming through the door? What's the average uh, ring up amount uh, that they're going to have? How much profit goes into each of those items that are being run up through the tills? So being able to devise an effective marketing strategy is important. Helping create a structure that defines uh, business activities and also identifies potential problems and suggests ways to either avoid or solve them. So really being able to work with a team and able to move your business forward. I call that a viable business solution. You really have to have a clear business plan. Without one, it just leaves too many things to chance. Uh, you have to have a solid blueprint. Can you imagine uh, going and building a house without a blueprint? You just say, oh, it's, I see what I'm doing in my mind. I don't need to have a blueprint. And, but then before you know it, you, for, you may have forgotten about um, you know, having a back door or having enough bathrooms or um, putting the bathroom in a place that makes sense or having uh, bedrooms that that enough bedrooms, you know, or having the walls in the right places in order to hold up the ceilings and the roof. So uh, you really have to be able to think things through. It really is an important decision that you make. And it, the business plan helps us make those good decisions. So it also helps us um, really be able to uh, see whether or not we're going to make a profit, as I mentioned. So you have to have benchmarks, you know, measures to help you see whether or not you're going to make the right progress at the right time. I mean, if you think within the first month you're going to be making enough money to start paying the overhead, that's great. But if you don't have enough money in reserve to keep your doors open, uh, that could be a real problem. So uh, benchmarks are, are really important. How do you know uh, you're going to have money, uh, the revenues coming in? Uh, how do you know people are going to want your product? How do you know uh, you're going to have enough time to market your product or service? So those things are really important. So being able to have a plan in place, if this doesn't work, what can I do? What should we do? That's what you need to be thinking about uh, showing potential lenders. Uh, if you need to raise money, you have to have a, a solid business plan. Who wants to loan anyone money just on a handshake and good intentions? Good intentions are great, but nobody wants to lose money. Not that I can think of. Uh, the executive summary usually is written at the last part of your business plan. You know, that's the thing that when people are reading it at the very start of your your business plan, they want to get hooked. So you've got to write the the executive summary in a way where people will go, oh my goodness, this looks great. Of course I'm going to want to read on, right? And that's the same thing with the first chapter of any book. People aren't interested in it because you haven't hooked them. They're not going to be.
so interested in reading on, right? So, bottom line is you have to have enough money, enough money in the right places, and you have to really be uh, transparent and think through how much money that you're going to need. You need to make sure that you're thinking through at least one operating cycle. Uh, what are your capital needs? Uh, if you don't need to raise money, you still need to have a plan. You know, it's not just one of those things that we call window dressing. It really uh, helps you know what you don't know. It helps you really think through things. So you need to really, viability is will it really work? Um, and you, in doing a, a good, viable business plan, you're really thinking through the key issues. And that's, that's why in my classes I have people working on a team being able to troubleshoot what those issues could be. It also allows you to think through uh, priorities and allows you to think about what marketing strategies uh, you may need. You know, don't just say, I'll, I'll have a Facebook page or I'll have an Instagram page. You know, what is your strategy for using each of the social media? Uh, I have a business, but would I use Pinterest for my audience? Well, it really doesn't make so much sense for my type of business, but maybe for the business that you're planning. So, uh, different audiences hang out in a different area. So, your demographic of your target market, uh, it's not everybody. And some people make the mistake of thinking it's everybody, and it may have a little bit of everybody, but you want to market and advertise to the people who are um, in your specific niche and have an interest in that. What is that demographic look like? Uh, you need to be able to really have a good solid financial forecast and be able to take an honest look at the numbers. Um, so um, you may talk yourself out of a business that's doomed to fail, which is a good thing. You don't want your business to fail, you want your business to succeed and you have to be realistic about it. It just is not wise to invest money into something that really is clearly not going to work. So let me give you the basic outline of things that I'm looking for in my small business planning class, my entrepreneurship class. You have to have a cover sheet, an executive summary, a table of contents, a statement of person, purpose, also called a mission statement. You need to have a, a business description, products and services, a market analysis, which includes customers, competition, strategy. Uh, you need to talk about the management, why they qualify, what operations look like, and then your financial plan, and your appendices. So we'll talk about each of these. So in your cover sheet, I should have the words business plan, uh, the name of the owner or owners and business name, business logo, uh, an address, phone number, uh, fax number, email address, and web address. And so if you're taking a class from me uh, and you don't have a fax number, that's okay. And you should have an email address and you should have a business uh, web address. The executive summary is the most important part of the business plan, as I, I mentioned before. Uh, you have approximately 45 seconds to get someone's attention. So you want to make sure that you're really careful and thoughtful about how you write that out. So um, that's the first part of the plan, and it's written last, as I've mentioned already. You need to be concise in explaining the current status of the business. You know, go on the web and look for some good business plans and see if they capture your attention as you read the executive summary. You know, maybe it's from a business that isn't so successful because the people just threw something together. And you don't want that. You want to have a successful business. Provide an overview of the business objectives, um, market prospects, and financial forecasts. Um, Describe the products and services and benefits. Explain how much money is required and how it's going to be used and expected to be paid for that. So your table of content should have all um, should number you have number all your pages of course and make sure you have the major headings of each of the sections in your table of contents. Your purpose statement, you know, really be thinking about what the mission of your entity is. You know, it should be a brief statement. It should inspire you. It should uh, say who you are and how you're going to go about it, what it is that you do. 
Um, make sure that you're very clear on your business objectives. You know, what's the purpose of the plan? Um, your operating guide or financial pur financing purposes. Your operating guide. This will be an operating a policy guide of the XYZ company. So you got to have some formal language in there. That's, that's professionalism. Uh, your financial proposal, how much money uh, is needed, what will the money be used for, how will funds benefit the business, why does this investment make good business sense, you know, how will the funds be paid back. The description of your business, uh, you can be an LLC or an LLP or S or C Corp, a partnership or proprietorship. Uh, you know, which sector, retail, service, wholesale, manufacturing, construction, agriculture, uh, what your product or service is, uh, is the business new, is it a franchise, is it a takeover, uh, is it an expansion, uh, why business will be profitable and growth opportunities, and when will your business be open. Uh, your owners and other management's experience in the business and unique skills and quality. So uh, you can put your resume in that and tax that for script. Products and services. You know, it really is important to describe each product and service. You know, have as much detail necessary for the uh, reader to understand and make it interesting. How is the product different? Uh, is it a sustainable competitive advantage? Uh, what stage of development, prototypes? working models, finished units, channels of distributions, packaging, patents, trademarks, licensing agreements, regulatory standards, or requirements. So really be very, very thorough when, when talking about your products or services. You know, that's the meat and potatoes, literally, of your uh, business, right? You know, those are the things that you're gonna be selling. Those are the things that are gonna be bringing in. And your market analysis, really is about understanding your customers. You can't be all things to all people. So you have to be very, very clear on the biggest demographic. Uh, and so the demographic means, you know, maybe it's primarily uh, women uh, from ages uh, 19 to 34. You know, maybe it you need to be more specific. Maybe it's Caucasian women in that demographic. You know, and so the more clear you are on the demographic, of your market, um, the better opportunity you have to be able to market to those uh, people. In that so um, be specific when describing your customers. Identify key current customers and any sales trends or patterns. You can do that by looking at other similar companies. You know, who really are the people um, that are that are doing business with that type of customer? You know. Um, then you can look better down the road at, at individual customers. The sector, location, structure, sales level, uh, special requirements, distribution, classification, number of employees, and expected level of sales. Uh, doing your market analysis, you also have to consider your competition, and that really is important. You know, you, some people don't think they have any competition, uh, but you really do. Um, there are always people out there that are doing something similar to you, even if it's an alternative. So there are people who uh, open um, a coffee shop and they don't realize that um, maybe um, gas stations are their competitor because they sell coffee too. You know, or maybe restaurants more specifically are their clientele. So everybody has, has a competition one way or another. And it may not be in the same town, but it may be you got to be thinking about who is purchasing your product or service now and where are they getting it from and why would they change what they do. So really being able to identify at least three of your competitors, you have to think uh, very critically about this. It's important and then assess um, what, how you're going to compete, you know, where you're going to get your competitive analysis against uh, the, your competition. You know, how will your operation be better than each of your competitors? 
how is their business increasing, decreasing, steady, or why? So you have to really do your research and practice good critical thinking. Uh, how are their operations similar or dissimilar to yours? What are the strengths and weaknesses? Um, what, what you learn from your observations of their operations? Go in and be a secret shopper. Be a, um, a respectful a customer or potential customer of their organization understand your competition a little bit better. You know, um, take a look at how they're advertising. What what are they doing well in their advertising? How can you do it better? And how uh, can you make sure that you keep an eye on your competition once they see your your business come into operation? What's going to keep them from doing something a little bit different to uh, take away? your competitive advantage. So that happens, right? So really have some contingency plans of action in order to maintain a competitive advantage. That's a really important term in, in having your own business. So when you're doing your uh, marketing analysis, you really have to consider your marketing strategy and how will you promote your product or services and retain market share. It's really amazing how some companies just flourish when they uh, get on the radio get a television uh, commercial. I had a, a book that I wrote and I wanted to market it and I paid for uh, Facebook marketing and I was surprised when I actually started selling uh, thousands of dollars worth of books because they found me with targeted marketing on Facebook. So there's a lot of things that go into marketing. The price has a lot to do with things, being able to take a look at the different ways that you can distribute your product or service. Uh, sometimes you can have sales reps or other types of distributors. Uh, you have to take a look at your marketing, uh, compensation methods, and how much control that you want to have over things, your geographical areas that you'll be competing in. Price is a big thing. Uh, sometimes if you're priced too low, people will avoid it. And sometimes if you're priced too high, uh, people won't see the value in it because you haven't done your marketing properly. So a lot of things go into marketing. How do you know that you've got the right price? How do you know you've got the right uh, way of advertising and promoting your product or service? So a lot of different ways, brochures, flyers, and uh, yellow pages are getting a little more obsolete, but the internet has a lot. So with management, you know, uh, usually in small businesses, there's a one or two people who are the main people who manage the organization. You, know, you have to be able to describe the responsibilities and expertise of each person that's involved. Uh, indicate uh, the education, qualifications, and past business achievements, job description, compensation, benefits, how will each contribute to the success of a business plan. Uh, and then if you have resumes, uh, those can be put in the appendix. These are things that will help build credibility. That's what we're looking for. So in your operations, uh, location really is a big thing. Location, location, location. It's amazing how many uh, companies that really aren't that amazing just have a great uh, location that makes it easy for people to do business. Uh, make sure that you've got the right type of facilities, the right space requirements, capital needs, labor requirements, you know, do you have the right people doing the right things at the right times essentially. Uh, you have manufacturing plans, environmental issues, production cycle, uh, capacity issues, purchasing policy, quality control is a really big one. You never want a customer to be unhappy. You always want your customers to be super happy. And be, as, a, as a matter of fact, so happy that they're going to be your biggest fans and recommend you to your competitors. Uh, so quality control is so important. And inventory control is important too. You've got to have enough product on hand, but you don't want to have too much product on got a limited amount of financial resources so you want to make sure you have those in the right place. And of course if you're selling perishable products you don't want those to go bad and if you're selling technological products you don't want them to become obsolete and, and you have too many money. So there's a lot of different ways of doing things and a lot of different considerations with 
uh, operations. Uh, I've seen companies that weren't union that became union. A lot of companies that become union become union because employees aren't completely satisfied with how their bosses are treating them. So really having a, a place in mind, I like to use Costco as an example because they are a, you know, a, a very successful business that are non-union because uh, employees are very loyal because the company has been loyal to them. So they've earned the loyalty. And so it's a wonderful business model. Costco is. So I don't get paid to say that, but I love looking at different successful businesses and, and, and really critically thinking about why are they so successful. And so when you have happy employees, they'll go out of their way to make sure that their customers are happy. Pretty simple concept. So really being able to think through, you know, what exactly um, is done with operations. Do you have the right systems in place? Are you owning or leasing your organization? How are you outsourcing? Sometimes outsourcing is a great way to go if you have the right business model. And that's what we're thinking about. We're really taking a look at how to create a solid business model. With your financial plan, uh, this will be the primary tool uh, for prospective uh, investors or lenders to use to determine the feasibility of the opportunity. You know, is this really going to be something where I can get my money back? Is this a good investment for me? Or should I not do it because it's too much of a risk? Well, if you really thought things through and then you still want to go with the plan, then of course a bank will want to lend you money or angel investor, uh, other types of uh, people who could help fund your business. Uh, if your business is existing, it should illustrate current financial status and be the best, and that'll be the best estimate for future business. So, being able to do a financial forecast uh, is very, very helpful for people to see whether or not it's a good investment. So, invest for three years, uh, the first year by month, and then the next two years by quarter, and include balance sheets, profit and loss statements, cash flow statements, capital requirements, and timing assumptions. So, uh, some assumptions, uh, how sales projections should be determined, cost of sales calculations, uh, details of expense projections, headcount, uh, accounts receivable, accounts payable, inventory returns, capital requirements and timing, and debt service requirements and timing. And then finally, in the appendices, the very back of your small business plan, explain and support and supplement the material in the narrative type of items in the appendix include resume of the management team, historical financial statements, copies of existing loans or notes, personal income statement if it's a startup, sales brochures, literature, advertising copy, copies of legal documents including leases, licenses, patents, trademarks, and then contracts or pending contracts. So that in a nutshell my friends is the small business plan. So if you are taking a class from me, make sure you have each of those things very well thought out with your plans. And if you're watching this video on YouTube and because you're, you want to know how to make a solid business plan, really take the time to think this through. You don't always know what you don't know, but writing a good business plan takes a lot of time that you have dedicated just to reflect and to write and then come back and write again as more ideas come to you. So where you put your time and attention, that's where you're gonna get your results. So I hope this video has been helpful to you. I really appreciate you taking the last 30 minutes to watch the video to the end. And more importantly, I hope that you have a great day because only you get to choose how you feel about it. I'm Dr. Paul Gerhardt.